Can we um, get a picture of what, like, of what was advertised versus what we got? Mm. Oh wow, something special about that. Battle Bad Italian. Olive Garden versus Carabas. Who's the bigger loser? We're here at the OG. Let's eat. What's good, fam? It's Shibro Kwame B here, and welcome to Kwame B reviewing the food review show, where we always keep it on a scale of 100 and give you the real deal on all the food we eat. We're unbought, and we pay for everything we eat. So if it's trash, it won't pass. But if it's good, then you know it's what you should be eating. On this episode, we're here at the OG Olive Garden. Let's get review. Ooh, look at that! That's a big salad. Whoa, better than we deserve. 15 years ago in the past, they would have the little Parmesan cheese grater thing and ask you if you wanted more or when to stop. I guess they just stopped all together. All right, well, what do we got in here? Oh, look who was cutting onions today. This is awesome. You don't even have to, look at that. <laughs> Come on. Come on, I know you don't care, but Ben, you have to scream it at me. What do we got? Some croutons from about 10 years ago. Oh, these are the little peppers that Papa John's used to use. Some olives in here. Romaine that we hope is free of any E. coli. Some tomatoes. I think I dodged all the black olives, which is great. And some really oddly cut some carrots and cabbage. It's like they put some coleslaw in here too. Very interesting. All right, let's do it. And their house dressing, which is on here, their house vinaigrette. Mmm, it's giving Walmart out of a bag from Walmart. It's like, I don't know. I think when you say something's like basic, this is what you think of. It's so, it's so thoughtless and so unmemorable. It's so lame. It's just, you know, sharp, acidic Italian dressing on top of boring romaine lettuce couple random veggies thrown in there, the red cabbage, the shredded carrots, they, just, they all have no place, they do nothing for each other, it's just whatever. I mean, it's edible, you can just keep eating it, it's just, it's not exciting. This wouldn't make me want to eat healthy, so I guess this is what helps sell the breadsticks and stuff. Can we um, get a picture of what, like, of what was advertised versus what we got? All right, fam, we got it. All right, so here it is, we got the goods. This is the tour of Italy, apparently. Lasagna, fettuccine alfredo, and chicken parmesan. Um, look, let's be real, none of them look appetizing, none of them look any good, none of them look like the as advertised. We... Not what I thought we were going to get, but it's what we have in front of us, and so it's what we're gonna taste, and it's what we're going to review. Let's start with the lasagna. So we'll tour of Italy, see what they be eating. Yeah, like, I'm Italian and I do not subscribe to this message. Okay. Take that up with the OG, buddy. Mm. Oh, wow. Something special about that. It just transported me right back to second grade. That steaming school lunch when they took it out of that microwave and they had that little paper film. You take it off and you got your lasagna for your school lunch. Absolutely as awful as that was. As awful now as it was back then. I'm just excited to know that they're still manufacturing them. It's awesome, so. Boy, oh boy. Oh yeah, it's almost indescribable what actually is under here. It's like a mess of somewhat kind of melted cheese, and some kind of sauce, some kind of cheese in there. It's really odd. Not really getting the layers. All right, so fettuccine Alfredo, the dish so many are in there. But you know, this more than anything else, people have told me before is their favorite dish in the world. Uh, or their favorite, like, fettuccine alfredo. I'm like, what? What? And they usually mean from places like an Olive Garden. So let's see, let's let's give them a fair shake. I've never had it from here, but. I love shrimp alfredo, I love chicken alfredo. Okay, good for you. You don't love your mouth or your taste buds, but whatever. If you're into bland white cream in your mouth, which I'm sure many are. Uh, as you fettuccine Alfredo all day, there, there is not an ounce, not an inkling, not, not even a, a, a milligram of flavor in that. This is so, and y'all are wrong for eating this and thinking that it's good. I, I don't know what you do. Oh, never mind. They put these at our table, by the way. They put, they, they, and I forgot, they were, these were here because they knew we would need them. So let's 
try this again real quick. Wow, all right, so that's cool. On to the last round, chicken parmesan. Uh, this is supposed to be a chicken cutlet. It's supposed to be pounded out really thin and like, you know, like kind of lightly fried so it can be nice and crispy on the outside and still tender and juicy in the middle. What are we looking at here? Has the appearance that it might be tender and juicy on the inside. The meat looks to be somewhat broken down. On the edges, it's kind of gristly, but in the middle, it looks like it's broken down. So let's see what we got. It's so sour. Oh my gosh, they picked the sourest tomatoes they could find. It's so sour, it's so, other than that, flavorless. There's no crisp to it at all. It's like super wet, super, and it's not just because of this like lumpy tomato sauce on top of it and weird kind of melted cheese. It's like, <clears throat> oh my gosh, it wasn't crispy to begin with. No mas. <clears throat> or however they say it in Italian, we're done here. Um, that was bad. That was real bad. Let's just cut through here, give it the range, the spectrum. It's taking the salad, the lame basic salad into effect. Everything there, I mean, that you, the fact that you can crank, you have to crank a ton of sea salt and pepper for it to even be chewable. For the fettuccine alfredo, the chicken parmesan is not even, boy, oh boy. And the lasagna is, did give me fond memories of school lunch that I hated and still dislike today. Olive Garden, as it stands, has earned a nine out of a hundred. A nine. Oh, also, we gotta remember this. Look at this, I never forget, never forget this whole root of an onion that they just toss in the top of the salad. I said I like texture, not the, the whole root. This is, boy, interesting. Real interesting there. Well, we're here at Carabas. Doesn't the, don't the menus look very similar? Oh, they do have trios. Carabas, yes! They have the exact same stuff. $4 more, and we'll see. We'll see what happens when you pay four extra dollars. Yes, it's the same thing we got at the OG. I'm so happy. They got at least different type of steaks here. They still got that sirloin. I don't know why they think anybody wants that, but here they also say they got ribeyes. Workshop fillets. Ooh, all right, well, at least we got something. Now look at this bread and this parchment paper. Interesting. It's like unwrapping a gift at Christmas. Bread that they gypped us on over at the OG. We've got our bread, we've got some herbs. You put the olive oil in here, and they used to do it for you, but I guess times have changed. All right, here we go. This is Caraba's version of their house salad. Looks like we got some kind of creamy, maybe Caesar dressing on there. We got shaved carrots, shaved carrots instead of regular carrots. We still got that pepperoncini, except instead of just being thrown in there as a whole one lazily like at the OG, this one's been sliced so easier to eat within the salad to probably get the tang, the acidity and the heat from it. Um, still got the purple cabbage thrown in here, obviously probably just for color and a little bit of crunch. No croutons in this one, which, you know, they probably are using carrots, the shaved carrots since they're thicker as the proxy for that. And then we got a couple of these olives that they could have kept over here on the side. And yeah, that's it. I'm just gonna go right into it. And this time I can get everything the bite intended. It's less boring than the one at Olive Garden, but still boring. Also, the carrots don't give like as good of a crunch as you would want. They're kind of chalky and hard to chew through. And the pepperoncinis, I think they should have sliced them even thinner. They would have sliced them even thinner because they're kind of like, almost kind of waxy. So they're harder to chew through, so it makes the bite more difficult. But it's fine. I mean, I don't think it's great or, or all that good, but it's a salad. A little less boring, a little more interesting than the Olive Garden one. But I mean, not one that I'd be seeking or coming back for. Like this wouldn't get me excited about starting a diet. Kudos to Colin, he actually offered us the cheese grating thing. Now look at this, this is certainly a better presentation than what the trio we got at Olive Garden was, no? All right, let's get into it. Let's get into it in the same order that we did at the old OG here. So, <clears throat> another classic Italian trio, the exact same thing head to head. I will say at least the color here is much better than we had over at Olive Garden. Also, the lasagna, I can see 
more, the layers actually, it's not all smushed together, so hopefully that bends to something good. The chicken parmesan looks dismal and abysmal, but whatever. And the fettuccine alfredo looks dry as F, but at least it's got some herbs on it, it makes it look kind of pretty. Let's get into it. Lasagna first, just like we did at the other place. A nice cut, hopefully it doesn't take me back to second, third, first, or fifth grade. It's like super soft and mushy, but it has a lot more flavor. Man, that texture's really throwing me off, but it's not hearkening me back to school as much. You know, it doesn't have as much acidity, which is good. It's a little more balanced out. It's just not inedible, not horrible. It's just the texture thing they messed up on. That's really weird. The fettuccine Alfredo, let's get our big, oh boy. The whole thing's coming up with one fork pool. Okay, bland as F. I think they mostly skipped the Alfredo and this one just gave us herbed fettuccine, which is fine, a fine play by them because the bits of Alfredo that I tasted was garbage. I think because I was already prepped by Olive Garden, I didn't have to spit this one out because I knew it was coming in and I, like, I felt it. I was like, oh, a familiar friend. Really weird, has absolutely no flavor in it. Wow, let's put ourselves out of our misery, shall we? Chicken Parmesan, oh no. Oh, no, 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 oh dear. Oh dear me, no color on there. Super soggy looking, the cheese is like plastered on here real interestingly, like, let's do it. Let's, this is, this is not looking good for them. Let's just take the bite and see. Not as gritty as Olive Garden, but, but drier. Ah. All right, look. Let's just be real. This was not much of a step up. The ambiance, I guess, is better. It's brighter out here. Um, the service was better. We got bread this time. Every, everything else was as, almost as lackluster as what we had before. It just looks better, except for the chicken parmesan. I don't know what they were doing with that. I, I, don't, I don't understand who puts that on a plate and is like, this is gonna be good. I, to wrap it all up, final score for Krabas, based on what we had here today, is 13 out of 100. 13 out of 100, and that is as fair as fair can be. It is just a notch above Olive Garden, and part of that is only because it's, we didn't get the root of an onion in anything today, so I'll take that. I'll take that too. If I was like just eating this out of hunger, I would be real, I would rather just be hungry. Same thing for Olive Garden. I mean, this is this was like the battle of worst to worst, but Carabas edges out Olive Garden in a race to the bottom. It's like they're falling off a cliff and it's like who just like Olive Garden fell slightly faster <laughs> and hit the bottom first and then Carabas fell on top of it but bounced up and survived. It's now paralyzed for life but it survived. <laughs>